I want to tie all this in with the discount rate here. Now, when the demand for capacity is growing, say for electricity, you have two choices. You can build a big plant now for many years ahead. So I'm going to, okay, I'm going to build a plant for the next uh, 20 years. My father had this experience working actually in India on the, when they were building the original steel mills about 30 or 40 years ago. The whole pressure was build big plants, get them really efficient. Um, uh, I, that's one approach. And the other approach is to build small now and some more smaller units later on as you phase the uh, <coughs> capacity according to the growth of the market. So the choice A is based on economies of scale and the choice B has this particular feature which I want to emphasize here is that if you decide to build the capacity when you need it that is not all now because you're if you're building for the next 10 years or 15 years but maybe in three or four years that extra addition if your money is expensive you have a discount rate of 10 percent or eight percent or whatever it might be might be say well three, three years later if i build that same plant i don't pay a hundred units because a hundred percent of what i paid the first year well your check may be for a hundred percent but the present value of it would be discounted over three years and come in roughly speaking for orders of magnitude would be 30 percent uh less or if the discount rate was eight, be about 25% less. So the point is that by deferring the cost, you counterbalance the cost of the uh, effect of economy of scale. That is, if the, if the argument is if I build it big, it's cheaper per unit. But if you delay the investments, those other additions occur later in time and their cost is discounted so that um, the advantage of building large in the beginning are counterbalanced. So the discount rate counterbalances the economies of scale. That is, what you might gain by using economies of scale um, in the productivity of the plant in principle, you can lose by the economics. Now, if you consider that economies of scale is a driver of the engineering design, recognize the same point that many engineering designs, what is the best technical design, uh, don't really factor in the economics of it. They'll look at the, all right, you asked me to provide capacity, this is the cheapest way to do it. So uh, this ties in, this discussion ties in with the MIT text um, simple case that I gave you on homework two that I've given you that you're turning in soon, that you know, if you look at it, I've given you some particular numbers, and of course your numbers depend on your special factors, your own, uh, but very often the thing with economy of scale just isn't a good design because on an economic basis. From a productivity basis, purely technically it looks great. From an economic basis, it may not. There's that counterbalancing of the, of the discount rate counterbalances the economies of scale. Now this is compounded by this thing of learning. That is, what is this thing? So learning is an experiment, an empirical observation. The production of more units uh, gives a lower unit cost. Why is this? Well, the first time, for those of you who have ever gone camping and have had to raise a tent, the first time you put your tent together, you probably, took a long time. You had to figure out where part A went to part C and so forth and you hadn't done it before. And by the time you've done it 10 or 15 times, you can probably do it much faster. That is, you've learned something about it. So it's a common kind of, of industrial analysis to compare the cost of producing a unit, whether it's a ship or a car or an oil platform by looking at what was the cost of the first design, was the cost of the second one like the first, the third, and so forth. And it's called learning on the basis that you, on the idea that you've learned something, how to do it better. Uh, better. It also may reflect, frankly, not just learning, um, but also that you've changed the design somewhat, you've tweaked it somehow, so it's now more efficient. 
but collectively it's known as a learning phenomenon. And this can be very important. I was working with BP at one time and for reasons which was counter to their, to their culture, um, when they were doing some drilling in uh, near Azerbaijan, uh, that uh, their standard practice was to uh, have bespoke designs, as designs particularly suited to the location, the depth of water, da 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 da, and um, that didn't work for a variety of reasons. So they made, th they actually implemented three platforms which were copies of each other. And what they found was huge uh, it, it, uh, savings through this learning. In that case, particularly because by the time the teams came to do the second and third one, they knew better how to sequence their use of labor and materials, how, when to time things, how to time things, what was the better way of putting the pieces together, just like learning how to put up a tent when you go camping. So this effect, which basically says, if you build modules that are the same, you can make it less expensive, adds on, in, increases the effect of the discount rate insofar as it makes future investments of a series of modules uh, cheaper. So it is another add-on to the importance of um, the discount rate in terms of counterbalancing economies of scale. Um, right, so as I just sort of said it, but, uh, and I'm calling it again, learning is in quotes because it's not only learning, you may have some technological improvements over time. Also, you didn't have to have that piece as thick as the other ones because you found out you didn't need it and so forth. So there are various ways you can improve on the design, but it reflects the empirical understanding that as you, an observable understanding that as you make the same thing again and again, you can do it uh, less expensively. And this can be uh, quite important. Now, the uh, next one here is this notion of competitive gaming, which is that uh, it's not so easy to define directly, but it basically says sometimes it's important to make a decision make a commitment in advance as a signal to competitors. So the example I guess re relate to here is when Cortez invaded Mexico and he came there by ship, he deliberately burned his ship uh, uh, so he could not go back. The implication being, I am committed. If you work with me, I will be here because I am not going anywhere else. I'm not going to, uh, uh, decide to go home and leave you alone. If you, re if you revolt against the Aztec rulers, um, I'm going to be here because I can't go anywhere else. So it's attributed by some people that this was a, a, an important aspect, competitive aspect of saying, we're not going to have any flexibility. We're going to commit right now. It's important. And uh, I'm now working with a company in Morocco, which produces phosphate and they're view is uh, somewhat similar. They have, uh, they're committed to have, be a, to add on capacity to their production. And it's a signal to everybody else that we are going to, we intend to be the big uh, producers on the block. We intend to be the world's uh, dominant producers. And if you want to build your capacity and compete with us, you're going to lose because we're going to have more of it. We're going to be cheaper and we're going to dominate. So, uh, that kind of thinking or vari variance on this kind of thinking suggests, uh, illustrates, tries to illustrate the point that eliminating flexibility it can be a good thing. So the tendency of these principal drivers, which I just referred to, are the following. First, uncertainty emphasizes uh, flexibility, the kinds of scale is against, the discount rate is for, the learning is for, and the competitive against is against. So uh, this is where I wanted to let you think about it, that when you're thinking about um, where are the pros and cons for having an uh, economy to scale, there are a number of uh, issues to take into consideration. It's not all 
if there's uncertainty, you have to have a flexibility. Maybe, maybe not. You have to do the calculations and explore it to get it right, but it's not clear what the answer has to be. There's not one possible answer.